What's shaking, everybody? It's your boy, King of the Golden State, here with another episode of the Wednesday Pile. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute. I saw the Wednesday Pile back on Monday of this week. Well, that's because I was over in San Diego doing the San Diego Comic-Con, you know, schmoozing it up, you know, all that kind of action. And now I'm back. So everything's back on schedule, ready to go. And I went to my local comic book shop and decided to show uh, show you guys what I picked up from the uh, comic book shop in my area. So, really quick, I'm going to get this puppy started so I can show you what I have. Some, I'm sure some of you guys got some of the same stuff, so let's get started. Picked up uh, Captain America number three, and, you know, we're all on, uh, on our... Uh, on the edge here, uh, as far as uh, this whole series about the deal about Captain America, uh, this series, this series so far is really good, guys. Um, if you if you guys are not picking it up based on the fact that Captain America is a Nazi, I mean, let's not keep in mind that this is actually a pretty original story. I mean, I think no one really is raising their hand saying, you know, Captain America currently has got some original storytelling going on. Written by Nick Spencer, same guy who does the fix. Uh, Jesus says is a good artist on here and he does a good job story, you know, telling the story. Um, just put the whole idea that Captain America is a Nazi aside and just enjoy it right now. Cause right now it's really good reading. Um, so good. I picked up the, uh, variant, which is done by, if you recognize the art done by Joe Madeira. Um, uh, Joe Madeira, I guess must be trying to make a slow comeback or maybe, his checking account's low or something, but he's back. It looks like doing some uh, variant cover art. You know, he did want he did another cover for um, uh, Justice League of America, not uh, about a few like a week or so ago, and this was really cool. I saw this one staring right at me over at the comic shop, and I figured, ah, screw it, picking it up. It's Joe Madera. How can you go wrong with Joe Madera? Except for when he does comics, and they don't come out on time. So. Pick up Captain America, guys. You'll like it. You know? I mean, there's still first and second issue still out there. Civil War 2. Gotta pick this up only for the reason because I'm already deep in it, you know? And, you know, if you guys haven't read the last issue, uh, go pick it up because the last issue's got uh, a real big reveal. Real big reveal. Try saying that 20 times fast. Um... Now I just want to see the aftermath. See, see how they can carry on with the rest of the series uh, after what happened in the last issue. So, artwork's good, writing's good. Funny though, a friend of mine told he shared something with me, which I thought was kind of interesting. He made, had a really good point, and I really hope it doesn't apply to this series. Um, Brian Michael Bendis is a really good writer, just not a good closer when it comes to storylines. Tell me if I'm right or wrong about that, guys. Leave a comment and put in. The, in the description box on your guys' opinion on Brian Michael Bendis. He may have a pretty damn good point. But anyway, uh, it's out today. Civil War number four. Give this one a shot. Tell me what you think. Also saw this one. Bright yellow Fury. Uh, Rom. Apparently he's not a Space Knight, looks like. They didn't put Space Knight on the bottom uh, like they usually do. Rom Space Knight. And it's by IDW. So this one came out today and uh yeah uh there's no further qu no nothing else further to say about this is that rom is back so um the zero issue was from the free comic day back uh back in may so here's number one so i'm looking forward to kicking back and reading this too so giving good old rom a shot also i uh, i'm a few episodes behind on outcast guys but not behind on this series. Oh my god. The actual comic series. God, I mean, like, by Asieta, I, I want to say Asieta and Kirkman. Great job. It's really, I mean, just keep just keep cranking out these issues so you have more stuff for the series on, on Cinemax. I like it a lot. So, if you guys haven't picked it up, uh, what are you waiting for? Go pick up the trays, give it a good read, or download it from a... Uh, from your comicsology app it's good stuff guys give it a shot also this one was staring right at me because they have he has a creepy stare 
but I wouldn't know. Predator versus Judge Dredd versus Aliens. Man, they're getting creative. They are getting creative. I gotta tell you. Um, by IDW, Dark Horse. Um, I I love stuff like this, you know, sometimes. And this cover by, by Glenn Fabry uh, says it all. I'm looking forward to sitting back and reading this, so... Uh, there weren't many copies out in the comic. There weren't many copies at my local comic shop, so I'm assuming there's probably not that many copies at your local comic shop. If there is a copy, go pick it up. It might be worth picking up. So that one looks like good nighttime reading, right? Also, uh, still read. I'm still gonna read this, even though I got the first issue uh, about a month ago, and it is just a, it is a movie adaptation. But I said screw it, you know. I mean, it's a little late, but better late than never if Star Wars Force Awakens. So, you know, going to pick that one up. Well, I did pick it up. What am I talking about? And, uh, yeah. Uh, I like the cover. And, uh, you know, I don't mind. I, I miss movie adaptations. You know, they need to do more of those, you know, down the line. I mean, maybe it's just costing too much money for stuff that like that to be done. Because probably people aren't really picking it up. But I think they need to bring back the, the uh... The, you know, like the the adaptation, you know, when it comes to when it comes to mo like movies, sci-fi films, or what have you. So, what do you guys think? Tell me, what you think in the comment in the, in the description box. I think they should bring back the comic adaptations of movies. Those things are great. And of course, I it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a Wednesday pile without picking up a crap load of DC Universe Rebirth. Uh, figure I'd. Grab the uh, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. Grab that. I don't know much about that one. The, all I know is it's not written by Jeff Jones. So, pick that up. Also picked up The Flash. You know, either of these covers, and the covers before it, you know, The Flash had really cranked out some really kick-ass covers. I mean, and all pretty much all over. Like, like going back, The Flash has always had some great covers. You know, and it always seemed very, like, tr like traumatic looking or kind of cover soap operas type covers, and I love that stuff about the Flash. So hopefully, I keep that going. And like I said, guys, great writer, great series so far. And got Nightwing with a another rebirth thing. I I decided to pick up a bunch of rebirths. You know, so I picked up Nightwing, picked up Red Hood and the Outlaws. You know, of course, it's a normal variant cover. I'm probably getting kicked out of house and home with all these variant covers I'm picking up. And also picked up Teen Tight. Uh, I'm sorry, the Titans series. And you know, giving that giving that one a, a try. Also got the Batgirl. I know I'm insane. Uh, the Batgirl uh, rebirth. So. You know, I think you know, I'm just collecting them. Maybe one of them will hit as a valuable book. But why the hell not? Uh, also picked up uh, Superman in Action Comics. Uh, comics, And I like this. I like the covers on these. I mean, these are really cool looking covers. You know, uh, Dan Jurgens, you know, and, uh, Tyler Kirk, I'm if I recall. Uh, looks really good to me. Uh, and you're kind of wondering, hey, James, where is the Wonder Woman rebirth? Well... Hold your horses, because you got your Wonder Woman, uh, your normal cover, and you got your variant. And the funny thing was, you know, you go back to the whole Greg Rucka, Frank Cho thing, and how hypocritical things are. Like, his big issue with Frank Cho's cover was that she was showing a small piece of underwear, which is now cut off, because this picture has been, got to the point where it was cropped, they cropped off her butt, and it wasn't like, oh my god, look at her, check out her ass, or anything like that. Um, but apparently Ruck had an issue with this, but didn't have an issue with this. I mean, nothing wrong, you know, I got nothing wrong with girl on girl action, but I mean, I mean, as conservative sound, as conservative sounding that Greg Rucka is, I like his writing, but what, I mean, you never bitched and moaned about this cover, you know, I mean, this is like a completely naked cheetah in Wonder Woman, but Anyway, I digress. I mean, you know, right now, I mean, Rucka is, I mean, the facts are the facts. Rucka, Rucka is writing a really good series for Wonder Woman. I like, I mean, I can't think of another writer 
for Wonder Woman who's fitted with Rucker just 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 right. So, I mean, I hate seeing Cho Frank Cho get you know off this uh, title, but you know what? It is what it is, and you know if Rucka, I guess for DC, it's like whatever Rucka wants, Rucka gets. And you know, hey, I like I said, I love Rucka's writing on Wonder Woman. It's really good stuff. So, it like I said, it is what it is. So I'm still sticking with it. You know, I'm still gonna go pick up Frank Cho artwork and such. But it was just heartbreaking to see these two not work together. You know. So anyway, guys, uh, this is uh, my whole. Uh, Wednesday pile pickups. No, not the whole. I got a bunch of other stuff, but like I said, uh, like I say every week, I could show you it all, but I bore you to death. Um, right now, it's pretty much what's important, you know, as far as what I picked up in the comic in comics this week. So, guys, I'm caught up. I will talk to you guys next time. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace.